The second stop on the BET Wrap It Up tour was to New Orleans, and I had to go there with more than just an opportunity to speak to people, but really to ask people. I wanted to know what is sex like in the city where sex genuinely is for sale. Lay, say, lay. Bon ton my father, he um, passed away from HIV. Yo, why you give it to me? Give it to me, give it to me. I think in this area, in this culture, what has happened is there's been uh, over-commercialization of sex because sex sells and that brings tourism, it brings people. The music is also centered around a lot of sex. I heard fuck me like a dog, repeated multiple Wait, times. Wait, don't you. <laughs> Take my clothes off, fuck me, fuck me like a dog. I love my boy, his sex is good. He beat me over and hit me with that good joke. Like run into him on the street and act like you don't know them. So they like fall in love with him. They're taking the education from our people. Here in New Orleans. That's what they're doing. They're uneducating people here in New Orleans. Why? Because they need them for to do what they need them to do in, in penitentiary. When you first think about the question, what is sex like in any city? Your instinct may be, like mine was, to go to Google and type in your standard rates and stats. Number one, New Orleans is number three in new HIV infection rates. And you think about the fact that New Orleans only has a local population of 500,000 people. On top of that, when we think about chlamydia, gonorrhea, and syphilis, they again rank in the top three in the United States in each and every category. And as far as teen pregnancy goes, three out of 10 young women will become pregnant before they turn 20 years old. But beyond that, beyond the sob story and the numbers, what is it really like to have sex in this city? To me, the best place to find those answers are through the visual curators, the ones who spend their time observing and documenting. And I was fortunate to have some of the best tour guides I think New Orleans had to offer. Award-winning videographer, Brandon Odoms, AKA B Mike, also photographer Erica Kane, and last but not least, up and coming designer Alexander Andrew Smith. Now the first order of business, which was actually a little bit of role reversal for me, is they sat me down to give me the talk. It was one of the most awe-inspiring, eye-opening, and informative talks I've probably ever had to date. If I was to say to you, what is sex like in this city, how would you guys answer that? I think it depends on who you ask first, because there's different pockets of sexuality, of cultural sexuality in the city. I think there's the, the, like there's two sides of every city, but there's definitely a strong two sides of this city. There's like the tourist side, there's the part that, the French Quarter and that area that sort of sells sex in a different way. And then there's like the cultural, like there's the music and there's like the, 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 the natural New Orleans scene that sells sex in a different way. So the, the, the touristy sex sell part would be like the strip clubs and- Right, red the, lights, yeah, all that jazz. The social scene that, that kind of has its own brand of sex. Definitely like marketed by the types of music we listen to. Which Definitely. Is bounce, the hip hop, all that stuff, you know? Bears getting laid, I know you made your cake. Now it's time to come, I'm gonna make this bed shake. Like an earthquake, knocking pictures off the wall. Take my clothes off, fuck me, fuck me like a dog. This this your girl Kitty Black, you heard me. We live New Orleans outside of end zone, you heard me. Straight like that. I'm actually bounce music, not actually all of it, but the majority of the bounce music it describes sex. Where does that come from? Like when we were just actually in the French Quarter just now, it's the same thing. It's all about sex. It's strip clubs, um, it's prostitution, there's that sort of over hypeness of it. Is that the root of it or does it come from somewhere else? Actually, um, bounce music, it started from like a dance, but it's just in sex movements or whatever. And people around the world, they may not understand it, but it's just our culture. So when you think about New Orleans, do you think of it as a city that's sexually progressive or one that has a lot of problems? Well, actually, we have a lot of problems. We have the youth. There are, a lot of them is on the wrong page and, you know, they're taking the wrong things and they don't know better. So some young girls sexually active at a young age. We have young teenage pregnancies. We also have prostitutes up and down the street. That's known very popular here. We have young girls starting at a young age stripping in the strip clubs and stuff like that. So, yes, it's a problem. But then at the same time, the music you don't think is the, pro is the issue? What's it could the be. It could be the music. In a sense, it could be the music, and it could be other things going on in the household. 
uh, what they're surrounded by as well, you know. And yes. I want to talk about your son as well, too, because he's at that age right now where everything is so influential for him. What conversations are you having with him to make it so that he's not just a victim of what he hears? Actually, my kids um, normally come into the studio with me, so when they hear my music, I also tell them that my music is not kids' music. So they're not allowed to sing my music. As far as my, as far as my son, I let him, let him know if someone else is singing it, don't mean you have to sing it. If they're dancing to it or moving to it, whatever, that doesn't mean that you have to like it or be a follower, be a leader, and take charge of your own. It came from here too, right? Is what? this like the birthplace oh, of twerking? Definitely. Yeah, you can make that argument, a very serious argument. It's the yeah. birthplace of twerking. <laughs> yeah, I mean like, not for other Bounce, like the, the music, bounce music, that's why I think it's, it's so important to have conversations with bounce artists because when you think about sex in New Orleans like bounce is like the perfect example of what that looks like and how it's influenced because within bounce there's no content in bounce other than sex you know what I mean yeah, you can walk, this is what I like about it yeah you could be driving down the street got some banging tweeters speakers whatever roll down your windows yo you might see people like washing a car you straight up just chilling on a porch whatever as soon as they hear that beat it's like yo dude drop the fucking shit like 12 year olds 5 year olds Upside down, so quick. Yeah, yeah like, like you and have like a good you, demonstration, it, ready to go. It brings your a smile to your face, but it, it, at the same time, you're kind of like something is not right. <laughs> Basic way of saying that is that in many instances communities socially um, medically they bring a pg rated message to an x-rated world and so i think what happens is in bringing a pg rated message to an x-rated mindset what it does is it limits your ability to honestly openly communicate with them because they see you as oh you're not serious okay so they don't listen to you even if you have good information what's missing from the new orleans upbringing that has people going into a lifestyle that doesn't equal a healthy sex life teaching teaching i'm gonna say my neighborhood and my neighborhood is six seven eight ninth new orleans East. and you can count the schools that's closed you can count the school that's no longer in existence. They're doing other things with them. You know, it's like, I've been to Catholic school for my majority of my life, and uh, there's a lot of Catholic people that go to Catholic school here, whatever, try to keep their kids in a certain area so they don't experience, like, you know, alcohol, sex, drugs too early, which, is, which are things that bring people to the city, attractions, major attractions. And uh, I think that causes a, uh, curiosity to grow that is, uh, can be up. It's like these harsh contrasts, because like even right. with the idea of Mardi Gras, like I was telling you, on Mardi Gras, Fat Tuesday is like partying in the streets, but then Bitch. Ash Wednesday is the next day. So it's like, this city is also heavily influenced by religion, so it's a heavily Catholic city. So it's kind of like all that stuff is happening. You know, St. Augustine, the school, St. Augustine, St. Augustine was like one of the biggest anti-sex prophets in the history of Catholicism. There's a strong religious culture that comes with uh, New Orleans lifestyle and Louisiana lifestyle. So you have the di dichotomy of religion that uh, restricts your sexual expression. And then on the other hand, you have the lifestyle of the people that is sexually expressive, very sensual. I think the great thing that you mentioned really is that when you're not really taught about the conversation, mm -hmm. so if sex is never something you talk about with your family, with your church, you never have that conversation, why would we expect young people to be able to negotiate when it exactly. comes to the real activity? And they only think about it or hear about it in that sort of salacious way, mm -hmm. where it's not talked about on a real passionate, serious right. level. Right. And also, you have to think about it. Sex also is a power thing. It's a, it's a transference of power. And so what happens is, if you have a young lady who, like you said, has not been taught about having a dialogue about sex, she doesn't even feel, I don't want to use the word worthy, she doesn't feel empowered enough to say, mm -mm, if you don't use a condom, we're not having sex. That's just the end all of it all. Because other people will Freakism, like, oh, she a freak. Why are you talking about condoms? You shouldn't even know about condoms. So they get demonized for really protecting their temple, protecting the sacredness of sex and sensuality. I would say, right, with males, it is the jail system that also influences a lot of, uh, right. Because we are the prison capital of the world. Right. The United States is the prison capital of the, of the world. 
Louisiana is the prison capital of the country, and New Orleans is the prison capital of Louisiana. So by default, we are the prison capital of the world. So the, the prison culture, I think, heavily influences Definitely. sexuality I as like well. I like to say, hey man, you grow up, you're a young black male, you're growing up, hey man, you going to Tulane University, you know, like in high school, or you going to Tulane University, right? On Tulane. Yeah, because the <laughs> jail is on Tulane. It yeah. is on Tulane. Yeah. And it bounces also a culture where you could have a transvestite on stage and nobody's tripping, you know what I mean? So it's like, I don't know how strong that is in other cities, you know what I mean? But in this city, you have a room full of dudes, girls, and nobody tripping, they all having a good time. So, but as a star, globally, it's like pushing that culture, like to the point where it's like, this is what we do in New Orleans, this is how we rock in New Orleans, and y'all just gotta accept it. So. I think it's progressive. Mm -hmm. It is. What's up, y'all? This is the one only sissy. No, I am one of the hottest, um, I wouldn't say bouncers, but um, southern rap artists in the south. You hear me? And I'm doing my thing. Let's go. A little Jamaican in there, too. I love the gunshot in there still. Eh? Today, I'm specifically trying to really understand what sex in this city is like. If you were to say, if I was to ask you, what is sex in New Orleans like? But straightforward when it comes to it and things and um um there's a lot of promiscuous women and males <laughs> out here, you know, say in the city, but I mean, you know, it is what it is. We just on some real stuff. When we want something, we want something. And what do you think you guys do really well? Like when you think of this city, like what are you proud to say? Like, I'm from New Orleans and like, yeah, we we may be very like sexually out there, but there's something beautiful about that. And what is that beauty to you? Um well, I can't speak as far as sex-wise, but as far as music-wise, because of the, the bounce that we do, we don't we don't see no gay bashing, no type of homophobia down here because of that we do bounce music. What is the homosexual experience in New Orleans? Um, you mean, I mean, we just like regular people, honestly, in this city because we put on, you know, everyone knows who we are from the, the teens, the adults, everyone. Um, I mean, I, sometimes I forget that I'm supposed to be like this quote unquote gay person that, you know, they're supposed to be hated on and all that uh, stuff. I mean, we just like normal people in this city because everyone loves us, especially the, the rap artists that's gay in the city. Is there like, have you ever had a moment where you sat back and really watched where your music impacts people? Have you ever seen a straight dude singing along? Like, oh, yay. Cool? Um, I, my, one of my biggest hits of all time was the song Consequences, which is um, talking about how um, I'm in love with this guy, but everyone is hating on our relationship. I had straight guys singing it, um, straight women, gay women, like everyone. That's, that's one of my biggest hits of all time, which is that song right there consequences and the street the street on crowd loves it and boss music is always like it's almost instructional when mm -hmm. it comes to sex if i was to listen to your song and play by play do what's instructed of me would i have an orgasm no no i, I would hope not <laughs> i would hope not that's just i mean no i would hope so honestly because then i'd be getting a lot of sales a lot more sales on my itunes and stuff just because of that and stuff, but I mean that'd be like that'd be like wow, really? And stuff, but um no. This to me is beautiful because it is about being sexually expressive no matter what your orientation is. It is about exaggerating and showing beauty in the fact that we are sexual creatures. But when that is sort of bookended or I should say storm clouded by the fact that the HIV rate here is so high. How does that really influence the culture? I don't feel like it's, it's focused on enough. I think that there's that um, ignorance is bliss type feel where it's like, well, it ain't me. And so, because I, I don't feel like there's enough conversations or enough um, awareness. awareness or brands or anybody that's even out here. Up. Yeah. Like you're up there, you know? Yeah, dude. Maybe it's because age just isn't sexy. <laughs> It's, it's not, and it's, it's not, like, yeah, so it's, yeah. it's hard to sell yeah, sex. Yeah. It's hard to sell sex, but then also sell like the, the problems of sex. You if you know went I mean? around there, like with your, yo, dude, everybody has AIDS, people would be like, yo, I'm trying to sell this shit, like, get out of here. Yeah, yeah. Run with that AIDS sign, because not over here, they don't. It doesn't work. Well, because here is so heavily influenced by tourism, maybe it's not in the best interest to have awareness. Right. Because for the local people, 
and that's a pro- that's a yeah. pro- that is a it is problem. because like I said, there's sex is being sold constantly here, and so it doesn't. It, that's not a smart move to kind of talk about. I would say overwhelmingly, kind of it is. Yeah. It is. I would say overwhelmingly, there's a high premium like put on like sexual intercourse. Just get physical, like no emotional attachment. And, uh, you know, there's a price for that. Well, you get the desire of sex before you get the understanding of sex, you know what I mean? So you're told, you're looking at the girls twerking, or you're looking at the music videos, or you're looking at the content of the lyrics that talks about all these sexual acts, but you don't get the conversation about how to be responsible with that, or how to do it in the quote-unquote best way for, for your safety, so. Or what comes before or after. Right, exactly. And it's like, it's like, yo, dude, nobody wants to be like out here putting the pussy on the pedestal. It's, it's, the city is pouring itself out. By the time I got to Kip the next day to actually have the talk with other people, I was so sexually charged up with information, with questions, curiosity, with appreciation for the people who have to live in this city of such great extremes. It's showing out with shame. It's debauchery and it's disease. It's celebration with this lack of true, genuine education. It's one big giant conversation that everyone's talking about, but no one's saying anything. It could be the most sexually progressive city in the United States and possibly on the planet. You can't worry about what might happen. You gotta worry about what's going on right here, right now. And that's the only way that you gonna get through that. All right? Well, man, give me a hug. I think that this city definitely is like a, an example of what it could look like, both good and bad. I think it, it shows what it could look like when it's accepted and not so taboo, you know, when sex is just human as humans are, you know what I mean? But then you also see the extremes. We do have the big problems and we do have the lack of education around sex. People can learn from this city, but also this city could learn from other places as well.